So I'll start by uh, echoing what, uh, what Ken and Steve said. This was really more about flight rules than it was about the significance of the event, and I'll explain what I mean by that. Our philosophy is we don't change the fueled state of the vehicle when the crew is present. You can do it otherwise from that, and other people do, but that's our philosophy, and so we built our flight rules around that in our procedures, in our decision points. What occurred, as was said, is that we have a mechanical valve that uh, vents the eldridge pressure on the lock, so it's venting gas. It's not dissimilar to many other valves like that. You have one in your home on your hot water tank that's not all that different. And every now and again, in rare occasions, a valve like that can get into a position where it's just off the seat, its temperature, its stiffness, everything is just right, and it'll flutter, or it'll buzz in this case, in cycle. And that uh, we've seen that before. We've seen a sustained buzz like this on AV53. We've seen short buzzes maybe three or four times. And what you would typically do is activate the solenoid that forces the valve closed, cycling the valve, if you will, and then you turn that off and you let it return, and it almost always stops. It has, in fact, stopped. Once we had the crew off, we cycled the valve and it stopped buzzing. If this were a satellite, that is our standard procedure, and the satellite would already be in orbit. But that changes the state of the fueled centaur, and we don't do that when people are present. And so our flight rules caused us, called for us, to scrub and to take the crew off before we cycled that valve. So that is what has happened. Um, right now we are going through all the data, that's why I'm here and not Gary Wentz, whom you would normally see because he's busy working. Um, we don't have an instrument on the valve that tells us how much it opened. We are inferring the buzzing by uh, looking at accelerometers that are nearby on the RL-10 rocket engines. So what we couldn't do during the count in real time and are doing now is going through that data to assess how many cycles were on the valve and whether or not it was fully open or not so that we know if those count as full cycles. We called it to a certain number. In fact, I'll tell you, we called it to 200,000 full opens and closes. If that buzzing was a full open and close, we were, would have been approaching our estimate that number. Valve's probably good for a lot more than that, but we didn't test it to that, and therefore that's our limit. So the team will work on that all night. Uh, fair chance we'll know uh, tomorrow whether the valve exceeded its life or not, or whether it has an, enough life against the qual limit that we established to do another attempt. Um, if we do, we'll get right back with our, our partners here and figure out when that would be. It could be a pretty quick turn. If not, we'll have to remove and replace the valve which means we have to take the pressure fully off the Centaur upper stage. We do that by stretching it to support it. Remember, it's a pressure-stabilized stage. It has to be either stretched or under pressure to be structurally stable. And then we would remove and replace it. We have spare valves. We know how to do it. We've done it before, but it would take several days. And so we would coordinate with the range and with, uh, you know, with our partners at NASA and at Boeing, and then we'd have a date for you you know, pretty soon, but I, I can't tell you that right now because we're still looking at the data. So again, uh, you know, I promised Butch and Sonny a boring evening. I didn't mean for it to be quite this boring, but uh, we're going to follow our rules and we're going to make sure that the crew is safe. Over to you.